Sometimes you find something in a video game that makes you think, Hello, FBI. Yeah, I'd like to file a report. This is why today I'm diving into the top 10 video game discoveries that were never meant to be found. Part 4. Half-Life 2. Early in the game, the protagonists meet with the inept genius Dr. Kleiner to reluctantly use this shoddily made teleporter. But before they step inside, they quickly express some reservations. You mean it's working? For real this time? Because I still have nightmares about that cat. No, no. There's nothing to be nervous what about. What cat? We've made major strides since then. Major strides. What cat? Doc, since he's not taking the streets, you might as well... Hey, uh, yeah, about that cat. Visualizing in three... What became of the cat was never solved. That is, until 12 years later after the game's release. In 2016, new unused files of Half-Life 2 started leaking online from a resource that Valve apparently had provided to an unknown third party. The Half-Life hacking community was able to quickly determine that these leaks were real, and started cutting off the source and began banning leakers before they got a visit from Gabe Newell himself. But before the leaks were squashed, documentation of particularly unique mesh was say that appears to finally solve the mystery of what actually happened to the cat. Oh, poor kitty. I'm pretty shocked they decided to take things that far. Well, I guess now we know what Barney's on about the whole game. Did you hear a cat just now? Tattletail. Tattletail is a game that takes place in 1998 about taking care of a suspiciously Furby-like toy, the adorable talking Tattletail. Tattletail, that's me! Who you attempt to shut the hell up through the entire game by tending to its knees before it calls the attention of its not-so-adorable mama. Players going through the files of the game, however, managed to find a number of additional baby talking Tattletail voices that didn't appear anywhere else in the game including the only instance Tattletale would have somehow actually tattled. We know what you did. Why you do bad? As well as this audio of Me horny. Did I just hear that correctly? Me horny. Yeah, he definitely said that. Call of Duty Black Ops 3. So I really don't know what to think about this one. The only reason I really believe is because I got this clip sent to me through Xbox Live which has the Xbox One overlay of what game the clip is from in the corner of the screen, so I really have no clue how anyone would fake that. Anyway, Show Me Your Moves was playing the campaign of Call of Duty Black Ops 3 when suddenly his game crashed and played this. Well, what? Yeah, I got no clue. Again, I got this Xbox One element over the video telling me the source is indeed Black Ops 3, so what exactly this is doing here is a complete mystery. Maybe it's a crash handler? Certainly seems like it'd be a risky one. I only hope someone out there will be able to find this animation in the game and please explain how the hell something like this happened. LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars Hackers going through the files of LEGO Star Wars 3 were going through the assets when they found files in the game that didn't seem very Star Wars or LEGO related at all as they found many resources and references to the Today Show weatherman Al Roker, as well as co-hosts Ann Curry, Meredith Vieira, and Matt Lauer. Now, this game came out in 2011, so unless the developers had to actually meet Matt Lauer, I kind of doubt these were cut as a result of anything regarding the show. Rather, I assume the Today Show hosts were removed from LEGO Star Wars 3 because why the hell would they be in LEGO Star Wars 3? Regardless, they definitely dodged a bullet by cutting that one. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 Thanks to C9 for submitting this headache of a discovery on my Discord server. C9 was going through all the visual settings for the game when he came across an option to turn on motion sickness mode, with it saying it would reduce the effects in the game that tend to cause motion sickness. Well, it seems like someone over there at Ubisoft completely misinterpreted what a motion sickness mode was supposed to be, as the mode appears to have teleported you to what it feels like to stay awake for three days at a Grateful Dead festival. I mean, seriously, how the hell could you even mess this up like this? All you had to do was reduce some of the effects that might cause motion sickness, and somehow you ended up with this. I think I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> Roblox. Roblox is a game that I never really expected to cover on this channel since it is, after all, the most popular game for kids ages 9 to 12. 
Yet, Supercar11 submitted on my Discord that some players noticed that this unexplained texture appeared on the Roblox face store that seemingly was going to be available to players for purchase back on July 12, 2012. However, the face was never actually released to the public, and whether or not the graphic image was ever actually considered for release remains unsolved. On top of this, another discovery that was never meant to be found was that the famous oof death sound effect from the game that arguably made oof a meme on the internet for the last decade Ooh. was recently found to have been lifted without permission from the extremely dark and intense game Messiah a game I covered in my first video, Weird as Creepiest Games, which is about a baby angel who travels the cyberpunk earth by possessing and killing most everybody in sight. Again, extremely fitting for a game primarily targeted at children. Oh, and Tommy Tallarico who did the sound for Messiah, wants that money. Nice job, guys. Ooh. Oof indeed. Geist. Thanks to Brutal Little Fajam for submitting this through oddheader.com. Released in 2005, Geist is notorious for being one of Nintendo's only published M-rated titles. However, in 2013 on the NeoGAF forums, a site home to many noted members of the game industry, a user posted something he found in Geist that seemed too crazy for a Nintendo game, or even for an M-rated game for that matter. As at one point in the adventure, the player comes into this room and possesses a rat. And when the player turned around and caught an angle underneath the secretary they were playing before, it seemed a lot of detail could be seen that obviously I'm not going to be able to show you here. Forum members on NeoGAF argued for 16 pages about whether or not what they were seeing was real. Finally, one member Alo81 ripped the textures of the model from the game and saw a suspicious area on the texture that wasn't clear where it belonged. So Alo did a little test and he changed the color of this part of the texture and again looked underneath the secretary. And he saw a very specific spot had changed colors, confirming what they had thought they had found was indeed fully textured. In an extremely crazy twist, one of the members who argued about the discovery the entire time revealed he was actually the artist responsible for the model, and was hoping they wouldn't find what they did, as not even he realized it was there. Apparently he downloaded the texture for the character model from a photo of a bare reference model he found online, and he failed to carefully review the excessive detail of the texture, as it was rather quickly slapped on as the game was rushed into release. So thanks to a rather careless mistake, not only did Nintendo make the bold move of releasing a rare M-rated title, they were likely also the first to ever show that level of detail in a game that actually hit store shelves. Not sure why Rockstar got all the heat in 2005 when Nintendo was the ones out here pushing real boundaries. Spore Spore is a real-time simulation game from the creator of The Sims, where instead of following simple human beings, you create an entire species as you watch it grow from microscopic amoeba until they form into a fully intelligent being and eventually undertake space. Most mysterious, however, players going through the files found a number of assets lurking in the game referring to a cake editor that didn't appear anywhere in the game, along with cake achievements, missing cake textures, and references to a harvester. And crazy thanks to modder Rob55Rod on the Spore Modding Discord, as he provided me a mod of an unfinished editor that was found in the game that partially restored how the cake editor would have actually looked with all the remaining resources that can be found in the files. And, uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. My only guess is the developers were originally going to make Spore a cake simulator until they decided that that was too complicated and instead decided to make a game about the creation of life. Probably a stretch, but we literally have nothing else to go off of. PS Vita Thanks to Mary Chrysler for the submission on my Discord server. Shortly after the release of the PS Vita, several Vita owners found something they never expected when they went to turn on their newly purchased consoles. As instead of the console booting into the normal start menu, it instead booted them into this strange dolphin mode where they could only customize the color of the dolphins, as well as add in light bulbs and display different text on the screen. Honestly, it's kind of cool. It looks like a sweet vaporwave album cover. The only problem was these Vitas might as well have been swimming with the fishes, as many Vita owners found themselves stuck in dolphin mode for good with no way to ever get out of it, effectively rendering their Vitas as nothing more than an extremely overpriced virtual fish tank. So as cool as this mode is for about 10 seconds, it's clear being stuck left with this after having dropped $300 would have left some owners going off the deep end. Ooh. 
If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And if you know of any other mysteries or discoveries that were never meant to be found, let me know in the comments down below, submit to oddheader.com, or even send me a shout on Twitter or Reddit. Shout out to Anna Morris, Arizona T, Bitwiff27, Dan Duval, Dead Plastic, Decider12, Dear Mid Crowley, Eddie Toxfit, Flex, Jonathan A. All Ornalis, The New I Fart in Elevators, Rage Spot, Riley S, Select, Sneaking J, Tony Humor, Towerizer, Wade Murdoch, Jan Benier, and Yu Yu Kirby for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.